believe well, if you're putting a blanket on it makes all the difference. So sometimes they're not bothered because it doesn't sound, I don't know, it, you know, it doesn't sound a bit strange to them. But that is as easy as it is, that it is an area for them, and they happily like it. Okay? So, let's talk about energy communication. You, uh, you probably have figured this out by now. <laughs> there are no guarantees in life, right? But I can guarantee you, when this talk is over, you will actually be able to understand it. Okay, so that's the first thing that I can say because, you know, I, I can't tell you have this accent, okay? Even though I don't call it accent, it's, it's a unique approach to English. <laughs> okay? But the, the, the point was, I, I, I was just talking here because I used to live in Ireland, you know the Irish, you know the Irish. James is making from Germany, we go back. You know, so they, they had no idea what to do with me, really. You know? And then the same, you know, I, I used to work as a social worker. I have to tell the story because it's funny, it has to do with animals later. There's this, I used to work as a social worker, and these kids would pass, would pass me by and say, get the girl and take a good job out. I said, what are they talking about? I have no idea. They would say all sorts of things Schwarzenegger had said. But I had seen the movies, because in Germany, uh, you know, they use a German voice print, I had no idea what they were talking about. Eventually I figured, okay, this thing that sounds like Schwarzenegger, but he's awesome. <laughs> okay? That's like saying to an Irish guy, you sound Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you understand? So, but anyway, so I saw the game, I, I, if, I, if I mimic, you know, Schwarzenegger, I can do anything, and anything. So I went back to all the kids, I'm a friend of Sarah Connor. <laughs> and, the, and, and the kids are saying, who's Sarah Connor? <laughs> so it doesn't make a difference. The reason why I talk about Schwarzenegger is, because this is, this is how this works, my brain is a bit, is a bit weird. But this is how it works. We have all seen Conan the Barbarian, and, you know, most of you. There is this scene where this lady says, you're so strong, nothing can ever hurt you. Oh, it's my favorite part. <laughs> but we call it Conan the Barbarian, okay? The Barbarian. And the word Barbarian was shorter once, it was Barbar. -bar. Comes from the Greek and says talking nonsense. <laughs> it wasn't like talking nonsense, but what it means is these guys came, they're only fighting, didn't make sense to anyone, so they gave them a name. The Barbarian, it's based on the Greek word Barbar. -bar. Yeah, yeah, so you understand the concept? So we're using all the other things. Oh, he went berserking. You have heard this one before. Well, there was a group of warriors once called the berserkers. And because they just went there, kicked everybody's head in, and went home. <laughs> they called them all berserkers, so they went berserk. What I'm saying by this is that all these things we can't place, we try to, you know, humanize and give them a name. I'll give you another example, and you probably understand then what I mean. Every time you read in the paper, there was someone killing animals, or killing animals, or killing people in, in the school. They say, what an animal that is. So you show me the animal that keeps 20 guns in his house, and goes to the forest. <laughs> okay? Stupid. So we're blaming animals. So this guy has done something wrong. So we're using animals, or the term animal, to describe something negative. And if you think, oh, this is the, 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 the stupidest language that I've ever heard, you're negative towards it, you're not going to learn it. It's as simple as that, right? The other thing that you hear, oftentimes, obviously, you have, you know, when you have these couples, oh, it's like an animal in bed. <laughs> <laughs> and you gotta go, which one? <laughs> right? yeah, yeah, so, so it's very strange. Well, what I'm saying by this is people then say, a lion, of course. <laughs> but in, in vision, look, this is what I mean. I'm not knocking anyone. It's great. If you call it a lion, it has never happened to me. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, look at it logically. If you would knew what it means, you wouldn't say it. Because this is probably what I think is what it means. They say it's like a lion because it means it can last three days. Guys, what was the last time you lasted three days? <laughs> okay, so that's why, we, why they say he's a lion. In reality, when you look at lions, they do this three days, but they mount at this one 45 times. Okay, but then it's only one position. So where's the fun in that? <laughs> so my point is that we are using these terms, okay, lions and all that, because we love them. And here's the other example, you all heard this. When you see a beautiful girl, oh, look at that cat, look at that chick, okay? Then when you, when you, when you finally live with her for a while, she becomes a stupid cow. <laughs> <laughs> or a pig, right? So what I'm saying by this is, in everything you do with animals, there is a lot of judgment in you. And the more judgmental you are, <laughs> the more judgmental you are, the more trouble there is in the world. It's, it's really simple. And we have been conditioned to not like certain things. Before I go into animal communication, we have to understand that. If we would really say, you know what? Pigs, and everybody knows this by now, pigs are more intelligent than dogs, or equally as intelligent as dogs. But if you would really say, okay, they are as intelligent 
and therefore how we treat them is wrong. Well, their life would be different. But because there's an industry behind it, it's not ever right to start, don't worry. <laughs> but I'm trying to make a point here. So we're deliberately excluding them. Okay? So that we don't have to see it. So we don't say, oh yeah, we know that they want it, but they need taste good. Okay? So we understand the point. So we're, we're picking and choosing. When we go to uh, work with um, with dolphins, there is a project a project where you know they, they were being used for, for the army and stuff, and they used them sign language. How many Dolphin, have you seen his hands? No, so they can't talk back. You understand? They're very intelligent, so they can sign language, no problem, but they can't do this. Okay? <laughs> they, you know what I mean? They have, they have no hands. So, what I'm saying about this, deliberately they are being excluded. And if you really want to, want to learn animal communication, understand it, you have to try not to exclude. It doesn't mean you have to go vegan tomorrow, it doesn't mean you have to love all animals, but you have to understand that your mentality towards a species means whether or not you will learn from that being or will impart a learning and teaching. You have heard this, you know, we're humans, we have this big brain, so we are the most powerful uh, animal of the planet. Only then, you know, when the word powerful is in there, are we called animals. Right? But the point is, let's just say you have birds, they're very intelligent, but if you, if you were a bird with such a head, you could fly. You know? So what happened is, and it's true, it's just an illusion, but it's not necessarily my belief, it's just something you can, you can ask, shake, Google, and find it, and it's coming up. In order for the birds to function well, their bones became hollow, and their brain got smaller, but when you ever, if you ever had a parrot, we had one for a while, we had a rescue parrot, he outsmarted the dog, no offense, Sonny, he outsmarted the dog every single time. She was just clever, okay, but you wouldn't believe it because it's just a parrot. So it's about these conditionings that, that you also have to understand when you approach a being. The very, for instance, another, another example would be you go somewhere in a pet shop, my pet shop, because I don't think you should sell animals in there. Anyway, long story short, you see there, and I've been there in, in, in Dublin, in a place, I went into this pet shop and um, the parent came in there and they had these tarantulas. And they came in there and the child was just looking, oh, how fascinating. And the mom was like, oh, don't go there. So from that moment on, this child will be afraid of spiders. We'll hate them forever. And it's true, we all pick and choose the things we don't like. Or we, <laughs> we, 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 don't, we don't go and learn. But it is really your response to things that make all the difference when it comes to animal communication. Okay, so that how, let's just start from the beginning. How does animal communication work? The, com the, the complex answer is it's different with FPP. You know, I give you an example. Like I said, you know, uh, you you you, you um, remember this that what the dog does. You have experience it. You can you can put it in pictures. Can you imagine or envision me being six years old? Can you do this? Can you see me getting smaller? If I was six years old, okay, and I would be here. You knew I'm really uncomfortable, right? Because I'm six years old. I did the things that you did when you were six. We understand it, and I could be Japanese, okay. Okay, whatever. <laughs> and you and I will do the same thing. Right? Because I, you know, even Japanese people are comfortable with that. So the point I'm making is if you are good in animal communication, you can teach the things you learn, you teach your dog here with a dog in Japanese. And teach the dog the same thing there without having to learn Japanese. Okay? So therefore our language is completely overrated. Okay? Just to say that, because we are, we are using our own skills and the way we, we think the world works, and then just try to somehow make this work for other beings. And it just doesn't work. I mean, how many breeds do we have, dog breeds? 400? Is that about right? You reckon? Well, loads, right? Well, it's hard to believe that all these animals do actually come, generally speaking, from wolves. And now we have, we have changed it. So when you have all these cooks, for instance, who are cute dogs, I know many, many cooks that need tablets from day one, that need eye drops from day one, because someone says they should look at Okay? Doesn't it remind you when you go somewhere, people say, like, oh, you, 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 you can't wait. You don't look like George Michael. I heard a lot of the musician. And they used to send my stuff and say, oh, you don't look like George Michael. It's very difficult to sell your music. You say, oh, man. You know, it's, it's just very strange. But this is the same, it's the same concept. Someone said, oh, let's, let's turn them all into things that we love. And look how many of these dogs suffer. 
that's our enemy. So all the problems that domesticated animals and wild animals have in this world are human in enemy. You understand? So the point is, I'm not asking you to save the whole world, because probably nobody can. But it's understanding that in every crisis that we come across as animals, we have an enemy. And once you know that, and then, then you usually say, you know what, with my animal communication skills, not only do I want to make the world better for the animal, but I understand that as a, a member of the so human family, uh, I have to do and make things right. Okay? So from that point of view, it's great. What, what, what is interesting about this is, if you are a six-year-old guy, if a child falls down here, we all go, oh my god, right? If a guy falls down here, I have to sort of, <laughs> you see that? <laughs> okay, because that's a logical response. I don't know what to do. I have ever thought seriously, unless it's really seriously. But if someone trips over something, my response is to ridicule it. Because I don't know what to do with it. Is it right to go there? Can I actually show emotions about this? Oh my God, are you okay? You know? You know? I think over 90%, I'm sure, you know, being German, I know statistics, don't, don't mind my statistics. But I, from the statistics alone, you know that at least 90% of the people have to say response. They just start laughing if someone falls over backwards. Okay? So that's why we had all these movies back in the day before we had dialogue. So it's about understanding that what we do is oftentimes, oftentimes also means that we're hiding behind something. Yeah? I mean, it starts with the fact that, that, that sometimes we go out with a group of people that are just bitching about others. And we're in there bitching wisdom because we can't say, I don't want to go out with you anymore. Right? It's just not for me. I, I, I outgrew you. Okay? We have, we have probably all been in this peer pressure situation. Wouldn't happen in the animal kingdom. Just not going to happen. Everything has its place and its rank. If you a certain amount of, of, of time, they, they listen to you, but if it feels wrong, you just stop. So from that point of view, we learn a lot. So let's just talk about the beginnings. How did this all work? How, did we, how whenever, did people say, like, you know, let's just take another thing. Well, there's different school of thoughts. One school of thought is that it actually precedes the Egyptians, but it's just known because the Egyptians wrote so many things down. So they were living with them in the desert that wasn't quite, you know, that was a bit more lush at that time. And all the animals there, the wild animals, had lots of food. And they were sitting in the house and saying, like, nothing to eat around right here. They are sitting in the house. You know, yeah, so they, they had no idea. They, they were trying to make a living there, but just didn't know how to feed you know, you know, themselves off the land. So eventually they would say, let's just look at them. Let's just see. And I'm not saying you know, we're trying to turn into other animals. But the thing is, maybe there's something in there that we can choose for our behavior. That's why later on people would wear fur coats and you know, wolf heads to be bigger. Okay? Now I believe, you know, the 21st century, only beautiful animals and ugly people wear fur. <laughs> you know, that's just my take on it. But back then, they would do this to make a point. See how powerful they are. Okay? So that's what I mean. We have to, we have to, to, to watch this. So, animal communication, the easiest way to do this is to understand that language is overrated. Okay? So we got that point. Easy enough to understand. That's overrated. So what do we do next? I look. Okay? Now, that depends on the species. Usually animals do not communicate with you because they know you're different. So they're trying to follow you. You can see this. The dog is, is a human being. That's the best example. People are like, oh, how are you? Because there's nothing wrong with his head or with his ears. He's just trying to, what is this? What, what, is, what is the response I'm having? And this is interesting. If I go, no, he doesn't do that. He goes like, oh, You understand? So my tone, it's not the language, it's the tone. So when you go, oh, goochie, goochie. Okay? He thinks you're inviting him to play. And here's the thing. One of the reasons why I meet so many dogs that have anxiety problems is because the people say, oh, I'm going to work, I'm making out of bed, oh, it's a movie. And then they fucking leave. <laughs> <laughs> so annoying. So it's almost swearing, I live in Ireland. <laughs> no, but the point is, you actually, because you're going, whoochie, whoochie, okay, your dog is in this state of staying, oh, where are you? And that's your responsibility. So knowing when to not make a pass of it, is in essence not just good behavior and good manners, it's animal communication. Okay? So I think how we do this tonight, because animal communication obviously is a very big, big area, there's the, the physical side of things, just to understand how animals move and 
how you learn it from you. Okay? Because you know, if you let's say you do wolf, okay? You have probably seen, oh you, you are, let's talk about the dogs because they like to relate. You have probably seen if someone comes in and your well-trained dog is trying to chunk them, right? Who are you? So why why would you chunk at them? Any ideas? Again, remember, you know, there is no silly questions, I'm just trying to pick your brains a bit. Why why do you think that your well-behaved dog has to jump up on this person? Especially if you don't want to. Lick your face. Lick your face. Yeah, okay, lick your face. But licking your face is just the response. Sniff, yes, that's all right. But that's what the dog does. It doesn't explain why he does it. In the animal kingdom, he's the wolf. You are the pack, the family. So he has his own rank, and he thinks, in order to understand you, I have to see you. Because in his world, everything is on their level, right? They would usually look into each other's eye, but they wouldn't, they would look slightly above it, and then know, okay, you're not a problem, a problem here. So they need to see you. That's exactly why so many kids get bitten. Because they're on that level and then they stare at the dog. And even the best behaved dog eventually just sees the eyes and go like, oh, you're trying to be nice. Okay? You understand? I'm not saying, you know, it makes it right. But what I'm saying is, I think the people who leave the dogs in the room with them, you know, well, I could, can't say they should be hung. <laughs> you know? But if they put the dog down, you know, then probably they should get a bit of uh, medicine. Because there's a reason. You, there's a reason. I mean, people say, like, don't ever leave a child with a dog, and it's right. Simply because if the child can't walk, they're on that level. The dog has no other level. The dog looks at you, and I give this example, if I would do this to you all night, you would move space. If I do, if I stare at you, I don't know if I just say I would all night, you would move space, it would make you really uncomfortable. Because it's, it's, it's a very strange thing to be stared at, isn't it? You're going to feel like, okay? So, but, but the child was like, Okay, so the dog is like, what? And then the room, no. So in here it happens. This is exactly how it happens. The dog all of a sudden just sees the eyes staring, and then the hand turns. So he thinks maybe I'm going to attack him. He does, even just, you know, it's sort of puppy protection. He knows that he's young, this baby, and can't defend himself. But you have looked at me, you challenged me, and I have to retaliate. Okay? That's why this happens now. It doesn't happen with all dogs. Why is that? Well, again, the argument is that, 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 that dogs just like humans are individuals. So not all dogs are like this. The other reality is, and again, you know, there's thousands of books out there. Don't, don't think, you know, you really got anything I'm saying. Just Google it. Can you see? <laughs> the point is, some dogs are actually bred to be more aggressive than others. Okay? Okay. Let's just try this different. Dogs do not recognize that. Okay? You probably all know sizes. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. But dogs don't make their size. So if a small dog goes into the park, it's like... <laughs> okay? The, the big dog, dog doesn't, it doesn't go, ah, what an immature dog. <laughs> yeah? I don't bother to you. Look up everything. Ever but eventually, they say like, well, no, this is my part. <laughs> this is actually another thing that I find fascinating. Do you business? Okay. I mean, I try the books, you know, you just record the tape, do your business, do your business, and go to the book. Nothing's going to happen. Fascinating how they do it. So anyway, they keep always a little bit that they can, they can spread. <coughs> but the point is, eventually, when the small dog isn't told how to behave, because small dogs get away with everything, right? Because they don't really hold the spell. So eventually, the big dog retaliates, and it's the big dog that probably ends up in the papers. Oh, another pit bull, paid to terrier. Okay? Well, I, I like terriers, so I'm not knocking terriers. But what I'm saying is, when you look at it logically, terriers are being bred for, for hunting rats and mice. They're much more aggressive than a German Shepherd would ever be. Just from the, the outset of how, how it's for, what, it, what it's being bred for, doesn't mean that they're that they not German Shepherds that go overboard. But on the whole, it's what they're being bred for. So the safer dog around children would be the German Shepherd. But if there is trouble, then only the ecology causes much more damage. Okay? The point is, we're reading this, we're like, oh my god, I hate this type of animals. That's why when you go somewhere to a shelter, they're full of pitbulls. Full of pitbulls. I mean, you ever, have you ever been with a pitbull for longer than an hour and survived it? <laughs> they're awesome dogs. They're really awesome dogs. They're non aggressive. You know, and on the whole, I have yet to meet a pitbull that I was really afraid of. Okay? But the problem.
problem is that when you go to a shelter, this dog has been brought there. He has been abandoned. He probably has, has been hit. Okay? Again, we formulate the uh, communication because he learns from our behavior. Other question, how many, how many dogs have you seen in his hands? None, right? So why are you using this? What do you think is accomplished to a dog? This is a, this is a whatever, whatever you do with your hand that hurts the dog. It's a learned response. He goes like, oh, didn't see that one coming. Because in my world, dog world, uh, wolf world, I have no reference for it. Okay? So, so when you then been called, you know, me, German fella, king on accent, you know, five foot and a half, five eleven and a half, and I go in there, I have to know, obviously, that this dog didn't come to a shelter and say, oh, is there space? Like the movie movies. Okay? Obviously that didn't happen. So, what can you learn from looking at, 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 at dogs? First of all, it much, makes much more sense to look at wolf and see if you find the same behavior in dogs. So, in the wolf pack, in order for them to say, I'm not here to fight you, they go in back there. Okay? So, I show my back. Number one. And, I know this is not a nice thing to say, but it's true. If he's really aggressive, he bites my tongue off my teeth. Okay, so you have to be clever about it. But the point I'm making, no, honestly, okay, so you have to be clever about it. But the point I'm making is, logically speaking, if I know this dog has been hit, very likely, if you know women, he was twice, or things like you <laughs> But women are not the ones that usually hit them. It's usually blokes. Okay? So, obviously, if I come in, they just see a big bloke with hands. So, why would he listen to me? Okay, it's my job to assess him. Can he live or die? Does he bite? So, obviously, I have to give him the benefit of the doubt and use language that he naturally understands. Because I don't know where he's coming from. And one of the tricks that you could, could do is, for instance, to say, you know what? Dogs can usually only do one thing. I mean, to be honest, how many people have been multitasking? I usually suck. I can't do five things at once. It's, you know, but people expect it from me. But dogs only do one thing at a time. So if this dog understands, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to bite him you know, or, or hit him. He's probably just curious, what is this dog with glasses doing in my crate? Okay? So therefore, he's not going to bite him. Simply because I did not respond the way humans respond to a problem that they have caused. But in this world, animals always get there. Okay? So this is what I want you to bear in mind when you start asking how animal communication works. Because animal communication works across the board. And if you ever, and I, and I call it conversation, if you ever had a conversation with a cow, I know it sounds really daft, but it's true, it changes your whole life. If you understand that behind this animal, you know, that we perceive as, as, as you know, not knowledgeable, is a spiritual force that you can tap into. We've got to talk about the spiritual side tonight as much as well. And I think it's, it's probably the most uh, interesting anyway, it's also something that everybody can do. And um, once you understand this, you're not going to harm him anymore, number one. But your, your, your friends will say, like, now he's completely lost it. What do you mean you had a conversation with a cow? Okay? <laughs> so, and so, so what I'm saying is, it's not so difficult to get a conversation going. It's the people you have around you. I mean, what would happen if you said, like, Said, oh, you're being emotional today. Yeah, I just talk to the cow. You can just imagine people like, yeah, right. <laughs> you can do it. Okay? Because again, we, we have dismissed it for so long. Yet, everybody watches Anna Breitenbach, you know, talking to this uh, panther. And for the first time in six months, I know you've seen this, so she talks to this panther, has been abused. And for the first time in six months, she's the one telling him he doesn't have to worry about anything, and he comes out of his grave. For the first time in six months, and try everything. So, if you don't care about the panther, you leave you, 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 you there for and everyone was saying, oh, that's just silly. And she did it. Simply because she knew how to, and after a couple of years, he couldn't care less what people said. But it's a learning gift, right? Because you don't want to be seen as, you know, he's just an idiot, he talks about all these things. You know, you, know, you, know, you always, to a certain extent, do worry what people think. And you also want to keep a, you know, a channel open, as it were. But at the same time, there's another thing that you have to understand. The moment you openly say, I communicate with animals, the people who don't do this think you have absolutely lost it. If you're on medication, you need more. Okay? It's just the way it is. So, so the hardest thing, you know, I've talked to many people over, over the years. I've been doing this now for about 14 years. And I obviously have met loads of people who have done this. And everybody feeds back that the hardest thing is to replace the people. Because that's what happens. You know, if the people are not on your side, why would you be with someone who always laughs at your attempt to say,
save a life somewhere. Find out what is wrong with this horse. Okay, what, what, what can I do something here? Why don't you spend time with them? But it's so hard if you grew up with someone and they're really great friends, but they just don't care what you do. Eventually, you have to let them go and they will be replaced. But what I'm saying is there's much more than just communication. Okay. Open question. If someone says to you like, oh, um, there's this cat, can you, can you talk to it? I hate the term, it. Okay, because they're not communities. Number one, we, again, it's just this one of those things. When you start, you know, when you start working with animals, you, you completely, you say his, him, her, okay? No, it's, there are no it's, okay? Unless you want to speak with him, okay? So that's number one. You have to understand that they are, they have a right to be asked for permission if you want to talk to them. Here's, here's the scenario. People say to me like, oh, um, I think there's something wrong with my dog. Can you check this out? And I think it might be cancer, because the other dog has it too. Logically, just, just use logic. If I, okay, it's fair enough, I, I, I don't know most of you. If I came up to you and said, do you have cancer? You don't look well. You would say, you know what? <laughs> and you're right. How dare I come in your face and say, like, getting one of it, are you? Okay, still still? Do you, do you, do you have cancer? You would say, like, why would I share this with you? It's the same concept. But the point is, people think in this picture, can you tell me this? And then they use mobile phones, I hate it. Because you know you have the water phone and then it's like, and then the picture goes away. It's like opening the door and closing the door. Give me a picture, bring it out. Yeah? Okay, so they don't care much. All they want is to see if you can do it. So you learn as well as if you look, don't bother with that crap unless you really want to know something. Because you have to ask permission. And then you go in and you say to the animal, you don't go and say, do you have cancer? You understand? It's, it's completely illogical. What you do is, Remember this, we talk about languages, okay? I am German. There are certain words I can't pronounce for the English already. <laughs> okay? There are certain words. I have to say this. When I live in, in Germany, uh, we, we actually go up and watching uh, American programs. And then we watch things like um, this thing with the butler, the house at Eden Place. Yeah. Something like this. So anyway, we watch all this stuff. And my teacher once said, so no offense, but that's what he said. He said, like, if you want to speak American English, put a uh, chewing on your mouth like you're under arrest for murder. <laughs> okay, I'm just try this. And if you want to speak British English, imagine a broomstick up your bum. <laughs> okay, because where I come from, we believe everybody has a horse carriage. Where the where the head it says marvelous weather, isn't it? <laughs> because we have no other experience. We believe this is England. The same way you believe all Germans must be in one party. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to talk to Germans and make me nervous. Yes, I think so. You understand? <laughs> because we, we don't move on. We, we, we know things that are in the news. People are going to be like, oh, I know you were born during the kids, but your parents were. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all they say. Is there a point you make? See, but anyway, so you remember this. There's also a lot of racism still. And we, you know, certain things that we don't understand. I hear that so many times. Oh, Germans. Oh, I thought you're Dutch. What they can understand it. <laughs> no, I was just saying it. Yeah, so again, it's really strange how all these things tie in. So what I'm saying now is I have experienced that people believe me less because I don't speak proper English. Well, how long have you been saying here? Are you living here now? You know, the young won't take over. I mean, no. <laughs> yes, because they want people to say like, oh, I'm really just a foreigner. I just like him. It's okay if I stay here for a while. So why would I do that? You know, why would I do this? It's a free world. You know, I have friends from all the corners of the world. I have also Chinese friends. And, you know, I wanted to go to Spain with them. And for three months, they, they had to wait for, for, for a bloody visa. Just because they were Chinese. Yeah? And I said, but I go alone and I'll show you a picture. But the point is, you know, it, the, the world is not a fair world. That's all I'm saying. And you are being caught up in politics as well in the world. Now. So, the first thing you would do, and it's, it's, uh, this is the difficult part because I have to, this is what we do. What, what time is it now? How are we doing? I will explain certain things to you, okay, just so you get an idea of how animal communication actually works, so because you have to visualize it. Visualization is not, not for everybody. It's difficult if you haven't done this before. It has to do with your energies. The other thing I want to say to you, <clears throat> when we talk about animals, it's not unheard of that the animals that are in your house at the moment, or the animals you have once had and they have passed on, they come back like it. Because we're talking about spiritual things, it's a spiritual world. I believe we're spiritual beings because it is a body, not the other way around. So, should you feel your animals during this time? You know, just acknowledge them because I believe there are 
up to the new for the first time. Okay, so we talk about this, and one, when after the break, we probably do this exercise, a sort of type of meditation, and then we invite in a spiritual guide, and then you can see if you can feel them. Would that be okay, or do you say it's boring? Tell me, because I'm here for you, it's like this. But if you really try to, you know, it's the same thing when people say, like, you know, there's a lot of knowledge in books, but you have to experience it. Same thing with the lion. You know, last few days, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So it's stupid to say that I'm a lion. Yeah. Or people say to me, like, oh, I stopped eating meat and the lion beat me. Oh, we're not lying anymore. Okay? So people just pick and choose. Anyway, so that's what we do. How this works is, you want to communicate with an animal. It doesn't matter at this point in time if the animal has passed on, whatever that means, okay? Or if the animal is still here. And it's okay, it's very different if the animal is here in the room. It's completely different. And we're not going to do much of this because the animal isn't here in the room. So it's very difficult. But I will explain things to you. The first thing you really want to do is to get a feel for the animal. So you have to make friends. And animals show you things in images. The easiest way, there's different ways of doing this, is to ask someone for a picture so that you have a that you can see it before you can visualize it. And when you know how to visualize things, it's much easier. You don't even need a picture. It doesn't matter. You can actually work with two people because they are connected with the animal. So you read it. Okay, this becomes something that I believe everybody can do, provided they have an open mind. If you're not open, it's the same thing. I mean, if, 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 you, if I say to you, like, you know, I mean, I never, I don't have a driver's license. I don't drive. So when someone bores me with their, with their car grab, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> right. I can't, you know. So I would not be the one that would work in the garage because I couldn't even find the tools. Get me this and this, well, there's a word called wrench or something. Wrench, wrench, you know this? Give me this, and I said, what is this? You know, I don't know. And I said, so if it's not your, your, your cup of tea, don't do it, is what I'm saying, okay? So how this works is you would usually have a picture that's called picture reading. It's different to, um, it is spiritual, but it's different again. Again, you, you will see it when we have, when we invite the spiritual guys. But you would look at, the, you see this is the thing, you usually do not look at them in the eye, okay? They establish this, because it would be very, very uncomfortable. Can I just look at them in the eye and see how comfortable I can make you? If this thing goes off here, you I just want to see this. I just want to show this to you. Yeah. All I want you to do is, I know it's not right to put you on the spot, but I do. I just want to get me closer in. Now she knows I'm coming, okay? That's very different. But if we were in, the, in, 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 a, in a train or something, I would go, you know, train moves. You would say, like, can someone get this guy out of here? What do you want? Okay, because it's invasive. You know? I mean, how, how would you feel if, if you're in a train already? But I wouldn't talk to you, so I wouldn't. What's going on? And you know, you probably will notice this. Other people will look at this and say, oh, what a weirdo. Let's move away. Yeah, it's not that weird. Okay, it's a long time. But you understand? What I'm saying is, I know it's, 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 it's um, makes you uncomfortable. Okay? I do this you because it's worth it. Worth it. I mean, now you know that I'm coming. Okay? But I want you to understand if you are an animal, which means your senses are much more evolved than mine. They have the same senses. They're much more evolved. How many people like, like pigeons? It's not too late. Okay. <laughs> and I don't mean on the same. I mean honestly, I mean I mean pigeons. Remember this. In the Second World War, there were pigeons who got medals. Okay? Because they brought you bloody clothes quite up. Okay? Remember? <laughs> so they were in here, they did something. Now, 60 years old, you can't see them. Is that right? Think about it. We have created this world for them. If there are too many, then we have made this Difficult for them. We have, we have did something wrong to the car. You understand? So the moment you see something over here with the car going on, instead of saying like, yeah, but there are a lot of people, maybe people should learn how to manage a car. Okay? So, sign a couple of petitions in terms here. But what I'm saying is, if you're an animal, obviously your senses are much better than mine. So if I look at you, you're not as bothered now as you are, because I know you're a very old man. Okay, but obviously it's different. But if you're an animal, you, will, you really do feel. Uh, have to, you really do have a problem if I do this, right? It's just to say that, you know, you don't you need God, it's just to... But the point I'm making is, I can see something you, you can't see. Even though we're talking here, the hands go like this, just slightly, because it's a, it's a learned thing. If I invade your space, you want me out. So people say like, oh, I don't believe in that stuff. See this? I don't believe in it. I'm not talking to you anymore. <laughs> Leave me alone. Look at the hands go. Before you, they go there, they go. <laughs> That's it? The same thing, you go somewhere and you talk to someone, and they go like, oh, that was really good. Okay, people, people use their hands a lot uh, to, to either emphasize on something and their eyes. Okay? So, what you do is you look into the eyes because it's not a picture. You would not look into someone's eyes without asking for permission because it's invasive. Probably should have just said that. Okay, it's coming down here, right? Get carried away. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay? So, you look at the, at the picture. And this is very true. This is not a spiritual thing that you can do or not. You know, it doesn't 
negativeness to me whatsoever. But the idea often is, when you go across cultures, that the eyes are the entrance points of the soul. And if you ask people, would they donate you know, their bodies for science? They donate everything but the eyes. When, you, when the people tick, they don't want to donate the eyes. So eventually, this is, this is sort of inbuilt. So you ask the eyes, and the eyes. you ask the picture, the elbow. It's because it's not a picture, it's just an elbow. You know, uh, depicted here. Um, I, I, this is how I would do it. I would say, like, you know, I'm, I'm here to talk to you. This person has, has you know, uh, asked me to talk to you. Would you talk to me? Okay? This is what you ask for permission. And then, if the elder doesn't want to talk to you, you get a brick wall. Really quick, quick, because everyone don't put up with your stuff. You notice this? If you, if you, if you have a funny hands on home, you don't want to go, okay, it's not for me. And it just lies in there. Elders cannot be fooled. They don't care about your friend. Okay? You could have the best friend. And you talk to him five hours on the phone. And then another thing happened. You say, oh my god, I was killed. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Okay, for four hours they hype each other up. Then they both put the phone down and they both hug their friend. Okay? But they got it off the chest. Dogs go like, can you give me some story? Hmm? Very story. <laughs> well, tell me more about it. Okay? <coughs> At the same time, when you have a bad day, you cannot get rid of your dog. And mostly of your cat too. The moment something's off with you, watch the enemy. They know there's something off with you. They are the first, and it goes across the board, any animal is connected with you, are the first to respond to your emotional needs. That's why we all love animals so much. You remember this, you know, I mean, you can have five girlfriends if you sleep with, and they have the money, okay? Well, but we can choose one of them. Yeah. No, what I'm saying is obviously we, we, we pick and choose, and animals are always there for your emotional needs. That's why you can't say to a child, why are you know hamster only live for three years? That's what they do. Okay? You, are, you, you don't, that's, you know this, if, if you have a hamster, and it's your, 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 your child's hamster, you don't explain to them the lifespan of an animal. You explain it on the emotional level. You say, you know what, he was old, he only lived three years, you know, and he will be us, with us in our hearts. The same thing you say when you're cancer. It's the same concept. Why would you take this away from your child or whoever, or your friend, because it's just an animal. How come that you can call in and say, my grandmother died again, <laughs> and have a day off, okay? Even though they know you only have two at the most. And they give you a day off, because you say, like, a human in my family died, and have a day off. If you call someone, very likely, unless you have a really good work relationship, if you call someone and say, I can't come into work, I know it's busy, but my dog passed away last night, you will find people say, so what, I don't understand it. You know, I pay you to be here. Not everybody will let you a day off because it's just an animal. It tells you a lot about, animals, uh, a lot about people, the way they, they react. But what I'm saying is, isn't it the same feeling when you love someone, doesn't matter if they're four-legged, feathered, or, 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 or human, and you lose them, or you love them. Do you not, would you not say that the animal you have in your, in your home loves you just as much, if not more, than, than, than anyone you ever met? So, that's why, if you want to do animal communication, always have this feeling in your heart when you communicate. The problem is, it doesn't make it easy. It's much easier if you go somewhere and you go to work and you do your 9 to 5, and the moment you see an animal in distress and you can feel the emotion, this is where the hard, where the hard stuff comes in. But the point is, you go to an animal that, is, uh, that, that lies on the side of the road, okay? And you know it only has two minutes, but you're there. It didn't die away. It's that simple. Okay? So we would do this for people, we have to learn to do this So, you look at the picture and you ask, can you do, would you talk to me? You usually get an answer straight away. Well, what you do then, you say to the animal, show me where you are. Okay? Like I said, it's the same thing if you would say to me, like, oh yeah, I'm going to teach you flower making. And I would mean, say, give me, give me five roses and make these ones. I don't even know what the other flowers are called. So it's not like, okay, now I know how to do this, okay? That's what I meant in the beginning, you don't learn the language in three, three hours. This will take practice. There are other things that can happen. All of a sudden, um, you know, uh, you, you talk to this animal that, that you have been asked to communicate to, and another animal comes through that is related to the family. Or the animal that you talk to, as you said, like, okay, I'm fine, all right. Uh, the, the other animal in the house is not like. And then you feed back to someone, um, the animal says, all right, but there's another cat and she looks exactly like this, and you're like, oh, that's my cat. So the other animal comes in to tell you to watch out for an animal. And when this happens to you numerous times, you start believing it. But it has to happen first, you understand? So this is how this works. You say, show me where you are. And this is, and then you have to, have to start all these white lies. And what that means is, so show me your favorite food. I mean, cats are not food, right? But 
show me the, the Judah, and you're like, oh, that's awesome. You know? They know that you're kidding. At the same time, what you say is, this is actually great. You show me great stuff. Because they're not humans. You have to talk to them differently. You acknowledge a lot. Okay? So this way, they say, even though you don't need this, at least you're not ridicul ridiculing it. Okay? And you just say, like, oh, that's great. You know, let's just say, I, I was a kid, I the same stuff. It's really great. You understand? It's the same thing. It's not different if someone shows you a picture and you say, oh, that's not heaven. It's a picture. It's, 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 a, it's a flower in my mouth. Oh, that, that's what I meant. Nice flower. But all you could see on the picture was, was, was something else. You saw your, 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 your child you know, draws a picture for you. You don't even know what it is, but you say it's nice. Okay? Because you don't want to hurt the child. So that's the same concept. In the beginning, in order to make friends, you have to also let them know you can't quite grasp what they do, but you, 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 are, you are thankful and grateful that they show you stuff. Okay? And then eventually, you say, show me how you feel. And oftentimes, they become, at least everybody's different, but in, in, in my work, in my case, they often become hollow. And they show me areas that don't work. So I know, okay, he is, he is dealing with me. And it's the same thing when I go to him and when I do spiritual things, so like, you, know, you, you, you scan the energy. Again, this is probably not in my opinion when we do all that. But this is how it works, and then I do the same thing. I use my hands and I say, well, I, I, I can, I, let me feel it. So I get the image together with the feelings. It's like using a pendulum that, 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 that does things for you, but it's actually your subconscious that uh, works it. Okay, so they're different, they're different ways. But this is how you do this. And once you think the animal, this is the other thing. We always have to have the door open. Cats, by and large, do not stay as long as other animals do. Because cats, as you know, in life, cats go, like, yeah, that's nice. Um, I, get a, I get a message, I get back to you. You know, cats say, oh, you're hopeless. <laughs> you know, so because they are all over the place, when you, when you have a conversation, they're the same, they're the same things. They haven't calmed down one bit just because they, they have been passed on for seven years. When they come back to you, they're in that energy. Okay? Because they, you recreate that energy because you want to know what's going on. But let's just say the animal is still alive. You know, and you want to know what's going on. Uh, only after a couple of minutes would you be able to say, explain this to me. And you can't say to someone, it's not a stupid question, are you dead or alive? You know, what do you mean you're talking to me? You know, you're out of your brain. Even, even hamsters, goldfish, people that people, uh, you know, animals that people give no credit to whatsoever, understand that this is the, the, the silliest question to ask them when you talk to them. And you have the same thing when someone is next to you, they say, are you still awake? Uh -uh. Are you asleep? Uh -huh. It's the same concept, it's, it's silly. So, so it's always the same idea. Okay? So you have to be, uh, what's the word, you have to be careful about how to do it. But it comes with practice, you, you will know. Because the, the reality is what is the best thing ever is when it happens to you for the first time. The problem is how do you explain this to someone? Before we have a break, I want to explain this one thing. One of the first cases that I had. In 2007, I had uh, I worked on my first cat. I worked on other animals before that, but not really with cats. Because cats are all over the place. I don't know because we're not, we're not listening to them. Energetically, when we talk to the spiritual cats. So anyway, I talked to this cat. And so this woman gave me a picture. And she says, like, can you read my cat? I just want to know. You know, what she's up to, this kind of stuff, which is the worst thing that happens. Look, if you come to someone, maybe for readings or maybe for whatever it is, come with a question. Don't say, I'd like to have a genuine, uh, you know, a general reading, please. I can say anything. Obviously, you know, when you, when you ask for general reading, you do get information that relates to you. But if you have an animal that has passed on, and you finally find someone who offers you a chance to communicate, you will know straight away if they are genuine. That's number one. Okay, I have never, never met anyone who said, like, oh, you know, this guy was a fraud or she was a fraud. People know when they come to you and they ask you, can we do this? Like, yes, there's, there's, a, there's a chance that, that you don't connect, but they know you're genuine because you, you just you just do know because from the emotional level. And even then, the animal already knows that you're going to ask, so they're going to protect you. Okay? You just have to trust. If you do this, eventually, you will notice that this is exactly how people will know. But anyway, she said to me, like, okay, but can you read this? this, this animal? So I did, and I, and I said to the animal, you know, my name is Thomas, nice to meet you, uh, can you know, I would like to talk to you, all this kind of stuff. And then I said to the animal, show me where you are. And I saw a room, and I had no idea what this is, and I saw a bowl, you know, and obviously everybody could make that up, oh yeah, it's a bowl of food, okay? So that's what you think in your head, oh, oh hopefully I get a hit. Because in the beginning you're, you're conscious about, you know, making this right. Eventually you completely disregard, because when you get images, you know they're real. And, you know, more often than not, people will actually say, I can relate to this. So, so don't worry about these little things, okay? So anyway, I saw all these symbols. I had no idea what they are. I was like, what is this? Why is this? And there was this scroll saying, I was like, what are you showing me? It doesn't make sense at all. So I said, okay, thanks for showing me where you are. 
And I said, okay, I better get back to this one. And I said to him, like, oh, you know, I'm really sorry I didn't get this, uh, you know, just, just didn't work. I said, okay, so what happened? So like, he showed me this, I don't know what it was, these symbols. And she said, oh, that's where I lived. She was in Tokyo, and where she lived, she had this ball, and she had shoes, clothes, with Japanese writers. But I couldn't, I couldn't understand, not, not that I, I mean, I've seen Japanese writers before, maybe, but I couldn't see them as Japanese writers. I just knew it's something my brain doesn't understand, so we just move on. Okay? But the point is, if things like this happen, you kind of go, oh, there's, there's more than meets the eye. Okay? So that's just a picture. Really. That's one way of, of just doing this. The other way that's probably easier when you have managed it is to know that every being, so not just you guys, every sentient being, has spiritual guidance of themselves. That's why I do shamanic work, you know, the American teachings where they really talk to trees and you know that thing. So eventually you will learn to invite spiritual guides. And because they're spiritual animal guides, they help you much quicker because they say like, well, you know, I didn't mean to help, I can't quite get what this animal is trying to convey. And they come in and help you with it. So you, 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 get, you get you get help. One example I want to give you before we have this break is I went uh, I lived in Ireland and I went to a, a, a horsey place in, in Kevin. And they had a horse rescued, but nobody knew anything about it, or not much anyway. And they wanted to have the, the animal assessed. So I came in there and I said, you know, to, to the animal, I hate this because the animal in a box like this is going to see the horse. Oh, is the horse okay? No, it's in a box, it's going to see the horse. What are you on about? Is the horse okay? It was better than it was before. Like if, you, if you put a bean in a box, it's going to see the horse. You know, it's not going to be a race for you. Okay? So you have to also understand that some people rescue these animals and then put them. Right in confinement again. Is it a great idea to put a horse, right? Yeah. Next. <laughs> yeah. So you have to learn a little enemy. Because in the beginning you do the enemy a lot. Okay? So anyway, I was so short, I asked this animal to show me stuff. And it showed me flags, but I didn't know the flags. I'm not really good with jokes. Really. So I, I, I wrote down the flag and I explained it to someone. And these are, these are the things that are really amazing. Because I said to this lady, um, I know this horse has been transported here because you told me. But I know this has been transported from a very, very far away place. Okay? Don't think like this. Um, and the, the, uh, the flag that the animal showed me was the flag that the animal saw as they moved into the trailer. Because I asked you to show me your journey. And the rest of the journey was nothing to see because they were in the trailer. So you can't ask an animal to show me your journey because they think, okay, I show you, I show you the darkness I experienced. <laughs> you gotta be like, oh, I don't get this. You understand? That's why it's so important to, uh, to emotionally and energetically feel them. And then you will learn to ask different questions. But that's, that's a learning curve. In order to feel, <coughs> to learn to work with emotions, that's why, that's why people do stuff like Reiki, do shamanic works, where you actually learn, oh, there's, there's an energy I can tap into. Okay? So that's what I'm saying. There, there, is, there are these health things out there. At the same time, uh, when I worked, started working with animals, I knew I worked with a vet for 18 months, a great person, but she couldn't understand one word I was saying, not because of my accent, but because she just couldn't understand that anyone could you know, communicate as an animal. So it only worked because I had also studied animal psychology, and I'm a pet psychologist. So when you know you want to work with animals in a shelter environment or in a vet environment, then really you should study something that the vet can relate to. And it will relate to anyone. Okay? So anyway, this was showed me this in the Norwegian, Norwegian flag. And they were saying, like, yeah, here, yeah, right here. And they showed me this, 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 this car thing with the Norwegian flag. So, obviously it didn't help me a little bit, because I just answered the question. But the point I'm making is that the people who would never have called me, they said, I hear about this German fellow, and they said, oh, I have let's get this guy. So, to be honest, every time I go somewhere, I get paid in advance. <laughs> because, you know, it's difficult not to say anything when you, when you find abuse. So, you know, you, you want to say to people, look, you know, there's a better way of doing this. And then the horse is telling me this. If you say to someone, the horse is telling me this, obviously, if they have an experience, they're not going to believe it. Okay? But you start saying it that way, because why would I say, I believe through the universe, this horse opened up to me, and you're like, what? So you say it how you say it to people. I have communicated with this horse, and this is what he said. Okay? So this way, you also start establishing that this really works. And we need more people to do this, because reality is, and I, like I said, I know lots of people who do that, you know, a lot of animals do get a second chance because of spiritual work. Okay? So when we come back, I think we should probably um, invite in a spiritual guide. I'll show you how this works, then don't worry. Um, and then you can feel the spiritual guide. And all we do is we invite them, it takes five, ten minutes. We invite the spiritual guide so that you can feel how this feels, right? Would you be interested in doing this? Okay?
reality is because they come from an emotional point of view, it gets emotional and you can't like, become to this. So as far as I'm concerned, every time I go somewhere, I see this as a sacred space. So if you feel emotional when you, and you do like this, then the animal doesn't come in. Okay, what I'm saying to you is, should that feel emotional, that's because you have, you, you're working with the energy you have to tell it for. Let it be allowed. The idea, the idea is just, you know, to, to move it about a bit. It's not about how, how well you shuffle. Just to say, well, I mean, we're ready for this. No, I'm just, I was just trying to explain to you. <laughs> So 
far as I'm concerned, you all been here together, even though we had to divide this. You chose a very similar item. Okay? I believe there's no coincidence, I just want to share it with this. <laughs> because you guys will experience the force. Okay? It will be different. So you are going to experience the fox, okay? And you guys will experience the coyote. So you both have canines, which, if I dare say so myself, is pretty common in the UK. You just like dogs, okay? So, <laughs> but it's interesting to see that we have we have similar, um, well, uh, sort of you know spiritual guides here tonight. So what we do is we do meditation. It's not a meditation, it's, not a meditation, it's just a little really, really journey. So, um, Close our eyes, and I will talk you through it as best I can. And then we will just invite this being, okay? And then talk about, basically, I will I, I, I talk you through it. The, the best way of doing this, because we don't have to have much time, is that you invite in the animal. Okay, here's how, here's how we do it. You invite, invite in the animal, and don't worry, if, you, if, if the animal shouldn't come to you, remember, it's a group setting, not everybody necessarily has to get it, and once, you feel the animal. All you say is, do you have information for me? Or do you have something to say for me? And I'm asking the universe and the animals right now to not say something that you regret sharing. <laughs> okay? Uh, but, but usually we do say, like, you know, is there anything you want me to know? And the reason why I'm doing it this way, because oftentimes, again, I know in the video, oftentimes you go through the, to, to, to the group and different people, not related to one another, um, have the same type of message, or is somehow related, because animals have traits, okay? So we, I will explain this all, all to you. Usually what we often do, um, you know, uh, our spiritual evenings where everybody gets animals. And you can see how messy this is if you would all say, oh, I have this and I have this and then this one. But we could do this eventually. If you wanted to, to, to experience this, tell these guys not come back because it's, it's, it's good practice, I would say. Okay? Anyway, so are you ready? Are you ready? Yes! Finally, you can talk. <laughs> How this works is, okay, in order to do this properly, madam, you can't do this, uh, because the energy, I see all of these people doing this, the energy is not supposed to go from left to right. The idea is we're working with the universe. So the energy comes from the top and goes right down, okay, two feet into the ground. So they're grounded. So there's a way. Of, of doing this, the easiest way is to just sit there, do not fall asleep, not yet. Take your feet firmly on the ground, put your hands either beside or on the sides or on the knees, as long as there is not no crossing going on, it's all good. This is just the easiest way to attract energy, okay? Or to, to ask the energy to come in, okay? So far it's good? Okay. This is shouldn't swear, it's easy. Honestly, because you know the intention is when I came here, we're experiencing animals. So it's very unlikely that you that you won't get off my stage. But you won't <laughs> are you good? Can you understand me still? Just do this a couple of times until, until you feel a bit calmer. Okay? And the easiest thing is to close your eyes. I know I'm gorgeous, I can't help it. But in order to really attract them, it's, it's, it's just good to, to be uh, not sort of being interrupted by other things. So, so if you're ready to do this, I'm just asking you just to take your feet firmly on the ground, nothing's crossed, and then just take a series of deep breaths. And the moment you feel calmer, we're inviting in these spiritual guys to perfect what they are. Okay? Breathe in through your nose. Hold your breath as long as it's comfortable. And breathe out through your mouth. And when you feel 
be relaxed and calm. Just let your breathing return to normal. Should other animals come in, which is not unheard of, acknowledge them, but tell them to let it. Because we have already talked to animals that we want in. It's not uncommon that animals come in because they have lettuces for you, and it's the first time that you open up to them. And should it happen, we talk about them, but by all means. But um, this is really a reserved space for the coyote and the fox, okay? So we are inviting the animals now. And all you need to know is that these animals are here. They are spiritual animal guides. And although they clearly are the fox and the coyote, they may even appear to you as light or the smell or the scent of something like this. Most of the time, they manage to, to manifest something. And all you need to envision is that they are small enough to fit into your lap or your own lap. And when you have them there, just say to them, like, is, there, is there something you want me to know? Or please tell me something. You will find a way of saying it. But the point is, you know, they should tell you something. So be easy. Should someone, or should, should the animal ask you to go on a journey right now, then you can go with them on a journey. Uh, they take you places. But please remember to tell them, um, it's nice that you show me all that stuff, but I really want you to tell me something. And then when I say we're coming back into this room, um, you know, you, you're back here. Because oftentimes animals take you to places, spiritual places. And um, so it's a very common animal trait. We're inviting in the fox and we're inviting in the coyote. Just feel them. So I'm asking the universe to speed things up. There's about another minute. So if the animal has to come through <coughs> for, for someone, you could ask the animal to now make itself known. Okay. Now it is time to say thank you to the fox.
how it works. These are, these are your spiritual guides. It's going to make you aware of things that, that, that you need in order to make your life better. Okay? It's, it's, quite, it's quite simple. So when it comes to the phoenix, that's quite interesting. Because the phoenix in the shamanism, in the American teachings, that we have a conference with, with, with a set of, of phoenix. And the phoenix is all about change. And what they're saying is, now is a good time to change. But also, you're already going through change, so don't fight it. Okay? So that, that's important. Because change, as we all know, when we're not knowing where we're going, it doesn't feel so great. But then that's always temporary before we get somewhere where we're supposed to be. Okay? So that's just them, them saying this. Okay. Now, with regards to, to uh, your experience with this too much noise, that's probably something you know already. <laughs> okay? Because that's also sometimes they're just, they're just acknowledging things. If you don't know what it is, that's just, that's just their way of saying that find the self, find the way back to yourself, okay? And really believe in what you want to do. Don't listen to anyone, in, in a way, okay? So don't, don't be guided too much by others, and trust that your intuition doesn't get you down. This is quite obvious, obviously, there's more, more play, yeah, self-explanatory. This also basically means this, you know, the idea would be, because the elements are always in love, okay? You can't say to 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 them, um, you need at least two, two weeks, because that's very difficult to do for the animal. I explain to you why in a second. So, every answer they have given you has to do with this, this, this right, this moment. Okay? So, <clears throat> this is important because this just means, you know, be more playful. Uh, and what it really means is to change your energy. The moment you're, you're more playful, um, things are not, that don't feel as harsh. It's easier for blokes because I can play a guitar. You know? If you squeeze my lips, I can put my snake on you. It's usually what I need is, but I get away with it because I'm a bloke. You know? So it's really true. It's much easier for blokes to change energy because nobody cares so much about what we do. It's just, you know, <laughs> you know. So it's much harder for, for, for women to really say, like, oh, let's just do something really silly. You don't need to face it. You don't need to face it. You don't need to face it. No? Can you try this one? It's good fun. <laughs> the point I'm making is, in order, the, the, the point is it can be really easy to change energy. Okay? I'll give you an example just to make this really work. If you are on Monday morning in, on the train and you have about 50 people or the bus or whatever, and you have about 60 people with you and nobody wants to get to work. I mean, this is a reality, right? Most people have experienced this. Nobody is any other than... You know, it's like you know, a sort of battlefield. If you are the one imagining them as little, uh, you know, what, what's it called? I don't know, there's, there's a term where you, where you put something on the ground and goes... You know, you let them move and they go... You know, anyway, if you envision them as something like this, you're going to burst out laughing. Yeah? Because that's what you do. All you do is change your energy. And you can also, when you're in this space, say, okay, I know it's Monday morning, but I'm not in this story. I'm not going to be affected by your energy. That's why this is so important. Okay? Nobody is over I mean, obviously, people know that they do this. Obviously. Okay? But when you think something funny, nobody can take this away from you. That's what they're talking about. Okay? With regards to your railway lines, I'm not getting very clear pictures. But what's important is, I know it sounds cliche, but I think you must have lived in a place once that you probably miss. So what they're saying is, go back in time a bit and see if you can you know, pick up pieces again. So what that suggests to me, without being too, you know, too much in your face here in, in the group, is that there's old things that haven't, haven't been dealt with, with fully. Okay, so there's things that can be left over. Okay, so that's usually what they mean. The point I'm, I was hoping to make is that you can feel them, for a better word, and that you know, because experience is knowing, that all they ever give you is something that helps you. You never get these things that you get in movies where they come out of the wall, and, uh, you know, or they haunt you and they do some things to you. That's just not what it is. <coughs> these, these spiritual guides are your spiritual guides, they're not here to harm you. But what they want from you is to keep a channel open. Okay? So the idea would be to say, well, I've, I've experienced with you there. But what was in the group, it's very difficult and I need to know what you mean. You know, have a nice bath if you really have stress. You know, just in, in the bath, you know, envision yourself getting smaller. You're in the bath and you can just say to them, be there with me and show me, show me stuff. Just be open that channel. Okay? So, are we good? Anyone else is starting to say that to some of you? Because that's 
very common. What, mean, what, because what that means is, is right now, you have to know two things. Number one, there are, there are new things just around the corner that you are fully protected. So if you have worries, they're usually not counted. At the same time, because you have a bird of prey, you have to understand that sometimes when you get angry, you can be devastated. Because the talons of a bird of prey can slice bones. So sometimes the idea is to, to, to make sure that you don't get angry or annoyed with things. You understand? So what they say is right now it might not all be good, but you get through it because you're fully protected. There's no point in arguing with you. Because sometimes when you say things out of frustration, nobody listens. Okay? Usually how this works is oftentimes they just keep on coming, so it's much easier obviously to get to get more information. But this is how this works. And also, uh, before we talk about Coyote, there's something generic. So you have the fox coming through as a spiritual guide, this information just for you. And what often happens, that's at least what, I, what people feel back, often happens, things just fall into place for you. So even though it might not make immediate sense to you, you know, what, no, no, I have never heard anything like this before. For the people, it oftentimes falls into place. So that you know there, there was really communication. And then obviously, uh, there's a generic idea. The coyote, for instance, this generic idea is to let you all know that the coyote is a scavenger. There's always enough for you to go around. So whenever you have worries, I can't do this, I don't know where this is going, don't even think that. You, it's not your past to live under a bloody bridge. It doesn't really matter how nice the bridge is. So that's a generic uh, message that, that the, the coyote gives. Okay? And, uh, you, are, you, are, you already know the fox because it's, it's the obvious one that everybody quotes, is, is to really use your brain about things. You may think things through, don't be too pushy. Okay? So, the, the, the thing I want you, want you to observe is how many people, because it's a, big, it's, a, it's a big group, that a lot of people have actually, in these two, well, I don't know, five minutes or whatever we did, in these five minutes, in a room that's fully lit, with, you know, a lot of people sitting next to each other, a very uncomfortable scenario for inviting in spiritual guides, you have still experienced them. So, you don't have to be mega spiritual, you don't have to be under a tree and warm. Which is the same song in German. Okay, so that's all I'm saying. It's really, it's really easier than a lot of people think. And what they want from you is to open up that channel. Because guess what? If you know that this fox that you just met is there for you, I guarantee you it will bother you when they're being hunted. It will bother you what, what people do to them. And that's, that's all they're saying is, okay, acknowledge me in this life. It actually goes so far that a friend of mine, a very close friend of mine, he sees all... All the wolves, uh, sorry, all the foxes he ever sees are the dead ones <clears throat> that sort of dodge his tongue to his countryside where he lives, and all he wants to be acknowledged. So he does. But in the beginning, would we'll, we'll do his head in. Like, what is this happening? <laughs> so he talks to the fox. Okay? I know this sounds very, very, you know, eerie if you haven't done this before, but um, I want you to, for the people who have experience here, is to probably go back and say, like, okay, I, 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 I heard you, um, say it again or com copying this more information, because that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to, to be with you, because we believe that every sentient being has a spiritual element, right? That's with you permanently. And then as your situation changes, your spiritual guide changes. So that's what I'm saying. Okay, so if we do this tomorrow night, there might be a different element for you or not. Okay? So, we good? Okay. Good. Okay, Coyote. Like I said, he's a scavenger. Another thing, people say, like, oh, I don't like scavengers. Hey, hang on. You know, that means there's always enough to go around and have to bother so much, you know, and worry so much. So, how many people here have had a, a conversation of sorts, or, or at least an experience of sorts? Okay. You can see a lot in the head, but your hand is enough. Does it mean yes or no? Do you have an experience? Good, but I'm an experience. Conversation is anyway the wrong word I use because it's, it's you know it's, it's a two minute I don't know how you doing this kind of stuff so I absolutely run and classify this conversation. But um, this is about finding out who has had some contact. So do this again, put your hands. This is the kick ass group. But to be all to be, to be fair, the coyote is, 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 is a wilder cousin of the fox. And the wilder the animal is, the so easier it is for them to get in because they have less, you know, inhibition. You know, foxes are very conditioned when it comes to trusting us. Coyotes usually are not so much involved 
these people, you know, these people, and that also makes a big difference. Because who wants to share what we um, clearly said? Uh, it said I had pictures of a horse, Good. horse's head, mm -hmm. and then immediately after, I don't know whether it was a cat or a small tiger, but it was feline. Okay, feline. Okay. Hang on to the thought because I might ask you again in a minute. <coughs> I, I see weird kind of uh, hyena thing kind of looking against my hand and then I turn it up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
Okay? It also means because you have clause you might as well use it. Doesn't mean you're going to hurt anyone. But you need to be prepared to say like I know the troll and the, the line will be troll here. Okay? Because that's their way of talking. They show you things that we we, we feel okay they're, they're aggressive and all that this is, is to is to remind you. Okay, be aware. You know? Have I left anyone out of you guys? And then, yeah. The hyena. Okay. Yeah, you know, actually, I, I saw a hyena once. I, I went to Africa. Excuse me. I went to Africa. I saw there could be a ranger. And I wonder there must be a ranger. And I have about 50 people of rhino, uh, pictures of rhino asses. Because they're so quick. You know, so they have all these huge asses. This is a whole gallery of asses. Anyway, I thought it's a, good, it's a good job they have. Until I noticed that they, that they also kill, kill animals there. So I didn't, I didn't want to do this. But there was this hyena who came to me, you know, we were in this camp, and this hyena came, and they were right in front of the door, and then they were actually calling for help. They were like, mm -hmm. that's what they used to do, mm -hmm. and then there were more and more hyenas. And I was shooting things. Anyway, not related, but I, but, but I was so scared of these hyenas. And then they were out in the open, that's another thing, now comes your message. You were out in the open with hyenas, and they come to you, remember this, I don't know if, you, if you're aware with, with um, you know, predator types. The hyena has one of the strongest jaws of all land animals. If they bite you, that's the last thing you ever experience. <laughs> that's it. Okay? So, but because they come at you, all you have to do is because they're not the primates. You just have your, 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 your flashlight. There are about 100 people, or 100 flashlights, about 10 people, all, you know, very flat. They have multiple flashlights. And they think, oh, there's so many eyes there, there must be a really big group, and they left. Okay? So, in your case, just to give, give you an answer to your question, when the hyena comes, this is also her saying that, that you should not feel, um, what's the word, ostracized for, for not always fitting in. Okay, so should there be things in your life where you, where you, where you don't always fit in, ostracized, and always, there is a word like this. It means, you know, not feeling as accepted. That's what is probably the worst word. Anyway, so what they're saying is don't worry too much about not being accepted so much. Because you're actually quite a powerful young man. Okay, and you will, you will make your way. But I'm sure, I know just on the energy, just energy based, that, that, that sometimes your life is quite tough. Your, your, your young life. So I don't know if you, if you get bullied, I know not probably we should discuss in the group, but this is all, all, all the hyena stands for is saying, you know what, if you stand your ground, you're strong enough, and it's okay to not always fit in. And the very fact that you jump off again in the end is like saying, like, you know what, you're safe, I have to stay here and, and, and defend you. Okay? But just remember this, because animals are always in the land. Okay? I know you, you probably have, have, have more questions than answers, but I have to get, get through. You, you have your arm on, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, the coyote came to me kind of barking, but was friendly. Mm -hmm. So the, the message that I was picking up was it's like to party, to okay. light things up. But then a badger, when you said a little bit earlier, the okay. badger came in and it was okay. a bit frantic. But that, that's interesting because when you have the badger, and if you better match, so I want you all to come because it's an amazing animal. When the badger comes, they're just saying, you know, when the fox comes in, sorry, the coyote comes in, like, you know, have fun. And the badger comes in and says, like, you know what, right now you really are a bit tight, a bit tense. That makes perfect sense. Okay? So they're not excluding that. That's, that's just interesting that, that, that there was the badger coming after you. Okay? And sometimes that's, that's all that means because if you would say, okay, or, 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 or be silly about it, I'm sure things would be lighter. And that's sometimes all it is. It doesn't always have to be something mega profound. Okay? Because in the end, it really turned out, turns out to be profound. Because all you did is to say, like, you know what, I'm not getting into this. I can change this. Okay? okay. okay. okay.
make us more comfortable. Right, so anyone please, if you have a space for two people in the car, okay? Drop us off, we exchange numbers, and I get to give you free reading, okay? So this is you, okay? Don't let me down, don't go home without me. Good, that's all. <laughs>
I think what is important to remember is if you haven't if you haven't experienced the energy and it stays with you for a while, obviously that that that, that takes a while to get to think. So don't worry, you're not gonna drop. <laughs> and it's not that's not the end of you. <laughs> but it's very normal. The important thing is about the tiger is that um, right now it's important to remember for you that you're unique. Because people look at the tiger and they think they have more to get out. When in fact people who really care about tigers and look at them in depth, they see that all the stripes are unique. No two like no two tigers look alike. <coughs> so what that suggests to me is that, that sometimes when people treat you like like you treat person X, you know the next story. It's to remember that what you do is sound because you're unique. So don't ever even engage in conversations where someone says, oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. So that's just about you knowing that, that you know, you are a series of, of life. Okay? <coughs> I don't know how much time we have, because I don't know, I have a lot of questions. Half, half. Uh, before the question. <coughs> okay, because I, I can see a lot of people do have some sort of questions. Um, if possible, if you, if you want, you can make them all about the experience you just had, but you can also talk about any other end, how we would know them, you know, or, or any other thing. And uh, maybe you have a question about the communication that you um, heard somewhere that we haven't explored. Something like this. Would it be a good time to just open up the floor because we're running out of time? And please take a moment. Right, okay, shall we, shall we open up the floor? You don't have a microphone to do it, shall we? Yeah, just that. Okay, if you could stand up and ask the questions, I can, it's probably easier for me to hear. Mine's not actually a question, it's just a follow up from what I said earlier when I said the railway lines, where I actually meant continuum and so on. There's actually a timber wall that went across diagonal, so there's three times. Okay. Going into the forest, towards the forest. But, it's so, but there you go again, you had, this, you had, you had this, this, this experience, and then you had the second element. Yeah, but it was a timber wolf three times, right? Yes. So it was the second animal that you had three times. It's another animal from the form. Well, it's the same thing to me. But, anyway, but what I'm saying is that, that you too had an experience where you, have, where you had other animals in there. Okay? So, every time you have a wolf, it has always to do with how you fit into your family line. Okay? This is all about family. I'm not saying you're not fitting in. Okay? But when he, when the, when the timber wolf comes a couple of times, he's saying, you're not listening, okay? I've been here three times now, okay? So what he wants is your attention at all this. And the moment he goes to the forest, he goes back home. So what he says is, I think I said it earlier with the railway going back or something, if I remember right here. This is about reconnecting, that's all it is, okay? You will find out when you, when you open up the conversation with him again, where exactly you have to go back, things will come into your mind. But it's the same, conceptually, it's the same thing. Okay? <coughs> Actually, it's so perfect what you just said. It's something that I'm first in. First of all, I can't share with everyone. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, of course.
you don't like jumping. And the most injuries in racing, there's actually a, a, a website, horse death or something like this, where you, where you have all the fatalities and injuries. We make them jump to win some proxy prices, some bloody whatever, whatever it is. That's not right. That's abuse. And they know it, okay? With regards to responsibility, obviously there were wolves once and then there were dogs. They are all men. Okay? As far as I can understand it, um, that was partly because they needed to connect with us. So I'm sure at some stage, I mean, the, the, the boys did not ask me to take me in terms of something else, but I'm sure that the idea must have been if we can connect, then my wild abuse can be easier. Didn't turn out okay. Okay? But all, that's why I'm saying, all, that's why we have all the responsibility that we have for these uh, domestic animals because they are man made. It's the same, it's the same, same concept. Okay? So I don't know if it answers your question because it's, it's, it's pretty specific. On a whole, they're much more forgiving. And here's another example, because like I said, you know about the, about the, the, um, the hands and all that kind of stuff. I work with animals now for the last, I don't know, 14 years almost. And um, in 2008, I became a term vegan. You know, before that I was sort of vegetarian and, you know, my meat here and there. And ever since I turned vegan, my skills in communicating with animals just went up like this. Because they were always forgiving, even when I was not vegan, they gave me information, okay? Because they're spiritual guys, you okay? But the moment they knew I do not harm them anymore, things, things changed. That's what I'm saying. I'm not asking you, I'm not doing it, it's my experience. I tell you this story, hope oh, I hold on, because it's, it's always emotionally intense. The way I turned vegan was here in England. Like I said, I'm from Germany and I used to live in, 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 in Ireland. And um, all the causes that did, like shamanic work, you don't find in Ireland. You know, the Irish just don't have them. And he said, James, you betray us, we like to breed some more, you know, us. You know, so I couldn't win it. Anyway, I went over to England and did this, oh gosh, six, seven day shamanic workshop where you communicate with animals and do all the whole nine yards. <clears throat> and then they bring you to a place, sort of a park, where they have um, animals and then you go into small talk. You know, different than picture reading. So you already sort of evolved to go picture reading and you have talked to spiritual beings. But it's about saying, go to a really wild or, or, or a creature you don't know and just see if you can do something in that place. And I remember this very well. I was almost vegan anyway. And I only had sort of chicken. You know, as, as most uh, uh, vegetarians slash vegans say, they only report on only a chicken for the vegan. Anyway, what happened was, I went there because they, they, so they, they, there was a, a, a rescue park. So they picked up some quick questions so we could get in. And then, you know, you had about 10 people, okay, I'm going to talk to a horse now, okay, I'm going to talk to a horse now. But when you have the vision, it's really, it's hilarious, okay? Uh, can you go talk to, talk, to, talk to the cow, please? Yeah, no problem. You know, so obviously it's very weird. So but when I was in front of this, uh, so here I was in the field, but well, there was a field, like this little gate. And there was the cow with the calf. And I said, how oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I wouldn't talk out loud, like, how are you doing, buddy? And there was, there was nothing coming back. It took a while for the animal to understand I'm going to talk. And this is how it works. This is why it is so difficult. Because the animal is grazing, not particularly interested, but the spiritual part of it is talking to you. Okay? Same thing, you probably have heard about this. If, if an animal dies in the field where cows are, why on earth, if they're so stupid, would they build a circle? They always build a circle of protection around these, these dead beings. You know, I didn't tell them that. People who have them in captivity don't tell them that. So that must be a spiritual response or something. Just saying. So anyway, I said to this to this cow, um, okay, what do I do next? You know, I was, I was nervous about this. So, and I saw the calf, which was behind the mother, I hadn't seen it yet. And I said to her, like, oh, that's a really beautiful calf. You know, what else can you say? You know, lovely hair. <laughs> you know, so then, you have a beautiful calf there. And I will never forget this, because it was so profound for me. She looked at me, you know, the spiritual part of her looked at me, and said, like, it's the most important being I had in my whole life. And just as she said it, my head turned right for whatever reason, and it says Pucha. And I was like, just like this. Probably because I lost my meat. <laughs> I needed to experience something. I needed to be told, look what you're doing. Because I was a bad listener. I was just saying it to the lady here. Before I turned vegan, I would say to people, you would like to do some flower arrangements. <laughs> Wouldn't be a really good. <laughs> you know, because it took me a while to, to get it. So that's my experience of, of turning vegan. So things can, can happen that are really profound. And, and so that's what I mean, you know, when you talk about have we have, do we have, have, a, have a contract and stuff. What it, what, it, what it changed is obviously not my perception. 
the very fact that they get a cow um, has been bred just to be eaten. A lot of people say, well, maybe it shouldn't be there in the first place if, if the life of the cow is just the life of misery. Okay, so that, this is where you have these different schools of thoughts. The point is, in the wild sheep is 20 years, and the dairy industry calls these little rats when you keep them for six years to keep them pregnant. Red rats. They don't even discard it. So I'm not going into these places and, and, and blow them up. I don't have, necessarily have these conversations with, with the dairy farmer because so far didn't quite work. But I do sign my petitions. And I have a radio show and have a live show show because of my experience. So I talk to all sorts of people who do something for the animals and make sure that a lot of people hear about it. So everybody does what they can, as you probably know, they talk a lot. <laughs> so having a radio show is perfect for me. Everybody does what they can. But has it changed my life? Absolutely. So that's just, just to give you, give you an idea. Anyway, I think we have time for more questions. You want to ask a question? Dogs telepathy, you know, in the early days, oh. work, and the dogs at the door, like, Telepathy, you have to understand this. We talked about the word Baba earlier, just meaning talking nonsense. Telepathy only means sign and language. That's all it is. So, a lot of this is being, is being um, you know, uh, humanized, which is, we think what it means. We know that, 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 that dogs are one of the, some of the most spiritual beings on earth. And they often are at the door, uh, um, anticipating you coming home. Well, there's two ways of doing this. There's a scientific way where you say, okay, well, you come home five times a week at five o'clock. So it's very logical that you're not going to be at five o'clock because the inner clock tells them, oh, you know, my body comes home, they will stay there. And then there's the other side that I would be, that I would uh, think is the, um, the spiritual side. We met yesterday and you brought me stuff that I had to scan in. And before, before you came in to scan, I just thought about you and the dog went straight to the door. And because you, you, you haven't been to our house before that often, it doesn't exactly know the time, so it can't anticipate either person. But they anticipate people very much. It's the same thing. I don't know if it happened to you. It mustn't necessarily, it's not limited to dogs. But how often have you been at work or someplace where you think about anything diff uh, anything other than your daily pets and you know you're sure they're coming in? Have you ever experienced you are somewhere and you can feel your dog? You can feel your pet. Have you ever experienced this, anyone? Right? So a lot of people have experienced it. It's, it's, so that's what I mean. Okay? But it's not, it's, 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 it's because they're spiritual beings. Remember this, the way I see this, I know it's, I know it doesn't make me necessarily a bit popular, but I believe we're all spiritual beings. You know, that's why I'm not so, so, so uh, uptight about doing, doing diets and little waves. <laughs> you know, because it's just a resume for you. Do my, do, do my waves, try to do 38. But, uh, but the point is, you know, we have, I believe we're spiritual beings. So having, uh, having knowledge of the spiritual guides, I absolutely believe because they're all spiritual, they can anticipate a lot. Okay? I don't know if this answers your question, but just wanted to say, to say this. Because we also know, hang on a second, because we also know that there were scientific um, studies done where um, people would do this coming home thing, would tell the dog I'm coming home within another place. So they had the time difference from another country. And the dog would use the exact same time for the duration of, of, of the people being there. But I don't like experiments. For instance, people know now, scientists know now, that um, uh, parrots always direct themselves towards the sun. Do I need to know this? I'm not sure. The way this worked is, the way this worked is that they put the parrot in the room and put um, a, 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 a cover over it and just waited to see what happened. So all this abuse that is going on, so that we can say scientifically it's proven, there's a lot of shite. Uh, they, they, they deserve better, that, that's what I'm saying. Okay? At the same time, you know, I'm sure it will take a while before, before we get it. you have a question, sir? I'm uh, just curious on that point. Um, uh, I don't know if anybody else has seen it, but I have with you. Rupert Sheldrake, Psychic Paris. Who? Rupert Sheldrake. He's a professor of biology. He has okay. a woman who has a parrot called a Casey. And this parrot, in a separate room, videoed with its owner downstairs, going randomly through envelopes with pictures that she didn't know she was going to see. The parrot told her what she was looking at in the separate room, okay. or said nothing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the, the odds were so fantastic. Mm -hmm. Statistically, it's miles away from yeah. chance. Yeah. No, I absolutely believe it. It's just that when you look at it, people say, like, oh, you know, it could have been... You know, because well, this, this is why. Uh, I'm saying is, we still find people that dismiss it. Because oh, yes. we, we, we imagine this: what would what would happen? I mean, ask yourself the question. I hope that that, that 
some of the stuff that he's covered, uh, he talked to about that, that I, makes you think and maybe maybe you know makes you question some of the choices you do. What would happen if we all say, you know what, I have a direct responsibility for what I do, and I don't have to go all the way and do everything right, <laughs> but I have a responsibility. And even if you just connect to this one enemy and say, like, your life is messed up because of my species, and I'm going to do everything and anything in my power to make this better. Imagine, because of the other idea about the butterflies, if every being is happy, what a great world this is. Okay? So this is not preaching, but this is understanding. Because remember this, if you ever had what is called a pet, which again, is not a great word, because I think they're part of the family they should be, okay? You will miss them, as I said earlier, just as much that you will miss your child when you go. It is just as important. It's just that someone, uh, you know, when you talk to someone else about it, they just miss it. I'll give you one final thing to bring that home. Um, I don't know how many people here have, 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 have lost dogs over the years. Obviously, probably most of you have. And I don't know how many people have lost them, um, you know, this, this, you know, they sort of have spring to the bed. I used to work in, in, in Dublin with a bed for 18 months. And it was really, really interesting because I always said to the universe, always, 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 always said to the universe, when I'm there, don't bring me anywhere, and everyone said, have to be put down. Please don't, you can't handle this. Every Monday when I came in, they had loads and loads of animals that they would put down. I would be the one that has to be there and hold them. And in the beginning, I thought, like, why is this happening to me? Because eventually, I noticed, because I would be there, because of my work with spiritual guys, I would be able to say to them, you know, you go into a better place, I could project things for them, and so they died more peacefully. But what drove it home for me was the following thing. There are dogs, and you probably all know this, that are 10 years old, and they're full of cancer, okay? And they're suffering really, really terribly. And all you need to do is to go to your vet and say, like, this is suffering and I recognize it. And the vet says, absolutely, it's not going to get any better. Let's put them down. Right? That's compassion. My own mother suffered for five years of cancer. And she had said more than once to me, I wish it would have been, you know, possible in this world to just find someone to finish me off as she what she used to say, so I don't have this pain anymore. And because we're humans and we're bound by rules and you know religion and it's all caused this and this and this, she suffered. Obviously that's not a unique story. But what, what, what I noticed is because it rang in my ear when you have these animals there and after a couple of minutes all of a sudden the pain is gone. And your own mother, because we're such a great species, right? your own mother is not allowed the same benefit. You have to, that's what I mean, we have to question you know, what, what are we doing here? And, you know, so like I said, you know, this is obviously not talking about, you know, these things. But it, it, it opened up a lot of, of uh, questions for me. And that's exactly why it's so important to keep these conversations open with animals. Because they show you things that we deny others because of the system that we have uh, adhered to or invented. So that's what I'm saying. Okay? Just to give you an idea of, of, of what sort of things that we do. We have, do we have time for one more question? I don't know, I should ask you. If not, it's alright. Okay. Okay. One more, more question? Because I'm, I'm sure you all want to go home. Hopefully, we'll ask in the car. <laughs> okay. Well, um, because I work shamanically, and um, even though I don't show it, I'm always bloody nervous before I have to go on stage. You don't have to run in the afternoon. Too much over here. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm a bit nervous, so I bring all my friends with me. So that's all. That's all shamanic tools. Okay, so for instance, this is, this is the record, which is the same thing like an instant stick. I don't know if you are allowed to have instant here. So, you know, you just do this to, to sense the place. You know? So, this is, just, this is just because my, my spiritual guide, my permanent spiritual guide, is a wolf. I always bring them. Actually, I, want, I only want to have, have, have the wolf because this is really old school. You know, I think a, a proper shaman doesn't have to work to, to carry you know, any, any really furry stick because it's stupid. It's not an animal. Okay, but, um, but the wolf is important. But that's why I have it. Okay. Should we call today? Because you know, he's like, he has to go somewhere. Can you see uh, this? Oh yeah, sorry, this, yeah. Put that here. Well, you can, you can see it when you book me. <laughs> no, honestly, if you have any question that you want me to, to, to come and see your animals, um, I have my cards there. Uh, all this usually works is I'm, I'm, I'm so cheap. Uh, uh, I, I just get paid by sessions. So if you have something that needs to be explored, my session is fully quit, and it is as long as it takes. But don't say it in the comments closet. <laughs> you know, because if it's not missing anything, you have to pay like five hundred pence. But I, but I'm, I'm not one of those guys that says, "Oh, you have to pay me X amount and it's for half an hour." If I come and I work on your animal, or, or indeed give you a reading or something, readings are just very good. But if I work on something with you, the session is always forty pounds, and it takes six hours. It takes six hours. So that's my. Problem.
device and also I get a lot of talks, some of them are free, I get workshops. There's the next one is on the 16th of February, I give um, readings at the Mind, Body and Soul event in Orn Art and Hall Cafe College. It's over the uh, Mind and Body Spirit Fair. And I will just sit there and we'll have this thing with me. And then people can come and I give them readings. Okay, well, basically the idea of readings is you come there and you have a question and we do you know, look into this. And I share it and it's, so that's what I do. <coughs> Easiest is to, to, to see if you can get a card of me of mine. There's cards here too where you have a website. On the website there are already all the dates. Because I talked about evidence tonight, uh, on the 27th of March, I actually, I think I mentioned it, I will be giving a talk just on 